This is going to be a brief introduction to setting up macros in Microsoft Excel. I'll open an existing Microsoft.xlsm macro file. Because it contains macros, it will bring up a warning asking us if we want to enable macros. I'll say yes. Be careful when doing this if there are ever macros that you haven't created yourself, as this can present a security risk. You can find macros under the menu here in View and along the ribbon under View Macros or Record Macro. The example we're going to do today is a very simple macro that will empty a data tab that's eventually going to be sorted. Then it will go to a data tab that has data we want to work with. It will copy that data. It will paste it into the data sorted tab, sort that data, and then return to what's called the macro dash. Here we can have buttons for various macros or sequences of macros that we want to use in this workbook. We're going to record a macro by pressing the record button here. From that point on, after we press record, each of the steps will be converted to Visual Basic script. It's important to think about what you want to do beforehand in order that it's robust for a variety of applications. For example, in this case, the data sorted tab already has data in it. So we'll want to clear that data out before we go to the data tab that we're copying and pasting in. Otherwise, you could run into problems if the data you're pasting in is of shorter length than the data that's already there, and you would end up with a mix of old and new data. So here's how it looks. We press record. It will ask us to give the macro a name. I'm going to temporarily call it data sort. And we can give it a description. I've written this out previously. It's basically a macro that is going to clear the data from the data sorted tab, then move the data from data to the data sorted tab. Next, it will sort that data and finally return to the macro dash. This description can be modified later, so it's not critical that we get it perfect this time. Also, the macro name can be modified later. So I'll say OK. Now we know it's recording because in the upper right, we can see that the stop recording button is initiated. So as said before, we're going to be starting in the macro dash tab, but we want to move to the data sorted tab. From there, we want to clear, starting with row six, all the way to the bottom, and in this case, truly to the bottom of the spreadsheet, and across to the right. Then we press delete on the keyboard, move to the data tab, where we're going to copy data from row two, all the way to the bottom. Using control, this will select the bottom of any data that's there and allow for expansion in the case that in future copy and paste, the data is longer or shorter than this particular example. So I'll copy this, move back to the data sorted tab, paste it up at the very top, then sort it, and move back to the macro dash. At this point, I can press stop. So we've finished recording a very simple macro now, and we can go to the view macros. We see that it's there, data sort. I can now edit it. When I open it up, we'll be able to see the visual basic code that was generated from this example that we just ran. We see that it highlighted the data sorted, started at A6, copied down to the bottom, and cleared the contents. Then it went to the data tab and copied from A2 down to the bottom. Here's the copy. Then it moved back to data sorted and pasted that data in. Finally, we used the sort feature that I had previously implemented. And then we should have returned to <laughs> the macro dash. That's not shown here, um, but it's something I'll correct later on. 
this is the basic appearance of it. If I open a macro that I've already done a bit of tidying up and troubleshooting, I'll go back here to view macros, and it's actually called data sorted. I did that to have it be consistent with the tab that it's working within. So if we edit that one and now scroll to the bottom, we'll see that indeed it selects the macro dash as the very last step. What's useful to see here in the Visual Basic script is the ability to use the single quote to comment out lines. They'll turn green when you've commented them out. This means it's code that will not actually be run in the script. This is useful when you want to troubleshoot. In case you think there's a line that's giving problems, you can comment it out. You can also comment out whole sections by just putting that character in front of each line. And you'll see that those lines will turn green each time you do it. In this case, the code turned out pretty clean because we were doing a very simple example. I'm going to close this now and show how you can set up a button that will run that macro. It's useful to know that you can run a sequence of macros after one another, and you can even use the tool here, Record Macro, to play multiple macros one after another. Although in practice, it's usually much easier to actually make these modifications within the Visual Basic code itself. If we want to apply a macro to this button, all we have to do is right click it and say assign macro. In this case, I had already assigned the macro data sorted, so I'll cancel it. You'll notice that when we hover over this button, because now it has a macro assigned to it, the cursor turns into the little hand icon with a finger. And when we press it, it will run our macro that will first go to the data sorted tab, empty that data, then switch over to the data tab, copy this data, paste it in, sort it, and return to the macro dash. To prove that this is really working, I'm just going to resort this data ascending according to column A. And I'm also going to delete a few rows just to make it clear that it's doing something and doing what I expect it to do. So if I go to the macro, click on the macro button, pause for a second, it will seem as if nothing happened, but it should have worked. So I'm going to go over to the data sorted tab and have a look. Indeed, when we look here, there's no missing data and it's sorted by column B, which is useful because the end result of this application was to have this standard bracketing samples all show up in this plot here. If that data wasn't there or was in incorrect order, this plot wouldn't look right. So for example, if it was sorted according to column A, and then we look at the normalization tab, it's plotting all the wrong stuff. So we know that our macro was successful. Just to do it more quickly, we'll compare the macro dash and this normalization tab after I've run the macro. Here's the macro button. I press the button and now look at my normalization tab and almost instantly it produces the data interpretation that I want to see. So that pretty much concludes the simple introduction to generating macros in Excel. It's mostly a matter of practicing on your own, pressing record, playing around a little bit, then going into the view macros after you've pressed stop record, opening up that macro, clicking on edit, and having a look at the code that was generated. It's a lot of syntax that you may not be familiar with if you're used to writing in other programming languages. But for the most part, you can follow what it's doing, especially considering you will have been the one that initiated all of the steps that went into recording the macro. When you're finished, it's advisable that you go in and actually add comments. For example, at the very end, we know we wanted to return to macro dash. So it says end with and then sheets macro dash select. That just means that in Excel, the last step it did was return to the macro dash. So I can put a comment in here. When I go to the next line, that line turns green. So now when somebody else looks through my code, 
they'll be able to understand what this line here is meant to do. Because of the comment above, it says to end this macro, return to the macro dash tab in the workbook. They know that this line of code means it's selecting that tab. I can do the same for the rest of the code, adding just enough comments that somebody who's unfamiliar can follow along what's been done but not so much that it's belaboring getting through the code. It's useful to also look up information on forums online. Some examples are actually here that I used in order to create this. For example, removing external links from cells or removing phantom external links. Um, it's surprising actually how much is on the forums and how useful that can be.